Hello creatives and welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to explore more of Illustrator on the iPad, but this time we're going to see what is missing. Now I know I just did a whole review of Illustrator on the iPad. If you didn't see that video, go ahead and click the card up at the top. It's going to be somewhere and go ahead and see that video before this one. If you liked it, let me know in the comments down below. So for this video, we are going to see everything that's not there. Now this isn't to say that they may not come up with an update later on with all of these things in it, but for now, they're not there. So let's look into it. I'm just gonna open up one of my projects here. These are some stickers I've been working on. And I did a lot of this utilizing gradients and text. So for the first thing, you see, I'm going to zoom in here. You see this effect here over the glow? It's not really an effect. What I wanted to create was an outer glow around the word glow. But surprisingly, I found that there is no effects in the iPad version of Illustrator. There is on the desktop version in the new 2021 Illustrator release, which literally just came out, but there isn't any, hardly any effects in the iPad version. Now, you may be wondering, okay, well, that's not really such a big deal because, I mean, you can kind of get there anyway. You can save, like you can press uh, this uh, export button and you can easily save it and then you can open it up on the desktop version. Yes, but, if you're out and you only have your iPad and you're working on your iPad and you don't want to have to wait, you kind of need those effects for some things, like an outer glow, an inner glow. A drop shadow, for instance, is not there, so you have to create them yourself. For instance, with glow, let me just ungroup this for you. Okay, with glow, instead of having to use an outer glow effect that you would normally be able to use, I ended up having to utilize the gradients. So under color, I had to utilize a more radial gradients and I put a few key points in the area. But in order to do that, I had to convert my text and um, convert it to outlines where it says outline text under the type options on the right toolbar. I had to utilize that and then put in the gradient effect and it still didn't give me a hundred percent what I wanted as far as the effect itself. Now that may not be such a bother to you but moving forward do any of you use a lot of the warp effects like for instance arch or arc or bulge or wave or I think it's fish eye and then there's also like the flag so when you have your text for instance um, this text up here that I have called have your now normally you can utilize the arch effect and you can get all of your options there that's still available in the desktop version but in the iPad it's not now you're probably saying well wait a minute they have this type on a path and yes they do type on a path is here but sometimes, for instance, with certain effects like flag and wave, you really can't necessarily do those effects in Illustrator on the iPad. I mean, you can, but you have to do it all like long form, meaning you have to go into your type tool, you have to outline the text, and then you have to move each element yourself. I'll bet disregarding the argument that you can save this and open it up in the Illustrator version on your desktop. But if you're out and about and you're traveling and such like that and you only have your iPad, that option's not going to be available to you. So those are just a few key minor things that I found that are missing here. I know a lot of designers and illustrators who utilize the blur effects. How many of us use Gaussian blur and radial blur on the daily, if not at least during most of our projects. So I found that that option's not here either. Now there is a case for this and I showcased it here. Whoops, do not select you. I showcased it here for the word moon. I wanted to create a crescent moon in the word. So in order to do that, because Gaussian blur is not here, I wanted to create this nice glowing blur effect so that way it looks like the moon has um, a nice soft has like nice soft edging to it 
but in order to do that I had to select the text and I had to go in and utilize my gradient options again. Now for this one I used more of the linear gradients because I knew the light source is only coming from one side and I wanted to fade the rest of it into the background. So um, I just ended up doing that for the rest of the word as well. But it would have been so much nicer to have that Gaussian blur effect in there. Besides all of those, let's go ahead and zoom out here. And there's one other thing that I found that wasn't there as far as things that you can do on the desktop version, you can't really do on the iPad version. So let's go ahead and take a text. Just draw a text here. Oh, look how pretty that is. Okay, so for this, it's just, just filler text. Let's say you wanted to wrap your text around an object. For instance, if you wanted to create something within a piece and you need your text to be wrapped around any kind of object. Well, you can, again, you can't do that in the iPad version. You can only do that in the desktop version. So if you select both your shape and your text, you go to your type options or even in your properties panel, there's no options there. And there's no options in the type tool either as far as that. There isn't any options really for you in your your path it's your combined shapes pathfinder type of scenario either. So those really don't help you and there's also none in the object tool kit either. So you really can't do your text wrap effect or options in the iPad version. Now I know a lot of you are probably going to be like, oh well you can just take the shape and move it and then you can just take your text, you can outline it and warp it and all this stuff. But I mean text wrap kind of negated the ability to have to do all of that so it's kind of inconvenient that it is not in this version yet. That's not to say it won't be in this version, it's just not there yet. So those are some of the pain points if you will having Illustrator on the iPad without those specific things in it. There is one last thing and um, this is more of a personal preference I believe. So let's say you have two shapes. I have just a circle here. Let's duplicate it. Let's bring it down. Let's make it a different color. Mm. Let's make it more blue, shall we? Okay. If any of you have taken a full graphic design course uh, in college or trade school, you would have had to do shape to shape blends. They're a pain point for many people. Not a lot of people like to utilize shape to shape blends if they can help it. Well, it's not an option in Illustrator on the iPad because the iPad version does not have shape to shape blend options where you can just take two objects, you can go ahead and go up to um, object blend, blend options and do all the stages and all that stuff. That's not an option here. So in order to be able to allow for that to happen, you have to go in for your color palette over here, go to your gradients and go to your freeform gradient. Now I do realize that freeform gradients do alleviate the need to be able to do shape to shape blends, but still sometimes shape to shape blends can be necessary. Um, but like I said, it's personal preference for most, but it's still something that is not there in this version. So. Uh, whether that's a positive or a negative for yourself, you know, be the judge, but I just noticed that it wasn't an option here. And there are instances where you do need to utilize it because as you can see with doing the freeform gradient options, it doesn't give you the exact smoothness and look that you could get with a shape to shape blend, let's say. So you can kind of get somewhere close, but at the same time, it's kind of far away. So those are the main key points of what is missing in Illustrator. There are a few other things. For instance, I noticed that um, your beloved SVG filters are gone. So they're not in this version. Uh, let's say um, if you've ever used the erode effect or the turbulence effect or um, bevel shadow. How many people have used bevel shadow? All of those are not in there. But I think the most 
surprising is the stylized effects are not there. Like the drop shadow, the feather, the inner glow, the outer glow, the ones that you use the most. So I hope that they might eventually come up with an update where those are there. I'm not entirely sure how they would pull that off, but those are not currently there and neither are the warp options or the blur options or the text wrap. The blur options I was pretty sad about because I use a lot of Gaussian blur within my work. So be that as it may, I hope you guys enjoyed my take on what is missing in Adobe Illustrator on the iPad. If you haven't seen my previous video where I dive deep into the program and show you all the things, go ahead and click that link down below. I'll have it linked there and let me know what you guys think down below. Are they major pain points for you as well? Do you care? Do you not care? Is it not that much of a bother for you just to save your work here and then go ahead and just open it up on your desktop in Illustrator and then just continue working? Let me know and I'll see you guys in the next one.